Good day, folks. Welcome to another episode of Seth and Such. Today we're going to talk a bit about the uh, flaw, one major flaw that I'd noted with the 316th line over the past three years. So, before anyone really takes this the wrong way and use it as kind of a negative review, under no circumstances am, gonna, am I planning on switching to anything else. It's just something, a problem that has arose that I've noted, and I'm just wondering if maybe I can figure out how to. Uh, get around it. Before we get too far into this video, I need you to subscribe over here. That will really help uh, get this channel up. And also, thumbs up, I really appreciate. Not only do I appreciate it, but YouTube appreciates it, which means if they're seeing some thumbs up, it means they push this video to other viewers, which snowballs. Anyways, thanks for your help. Let's get started. So, I'm going to try and draw it out for you a bit here understanding that I'm by no means an art artist. If I was, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be this bad. We'll call this the top of the hill. And down here would be bottom. So at the top of the hill, you have your anchor tree up here. And then your line makes its way downhill in a fashion something like that and that way you're picking up trees here and say here and here and here and here and here so you kind of get the idea so it just kind of weaves down down the hill and it gets to the bottom. So my slope, and it's kind of part of the issue, is a north westerly facing hill. Maybe north northwest. So it's more northern northern facing, but it has a shade to a a bit towards the uh, so. We'll just put that there. That's not right. So you kind of be like this. North. So it's kind of... A, so when the sun, it always rises from the east, as you know. Like so. So what happens is we're in the morning sun's starting to come up let's back up so i've noted that this issue is more prevalent early in the season and for the first uh, probably i don't know two weeks or so when you're when you're just on the verge of of making sap or not making sap you have that period of window where you get like a three three to four hour span before it gets too cold again and shuts back down kind of just that that starting effect. So what happens with this is that the sun comes up, warms up the lines, warms up the tree, and then it starts to run. But then it builds your vacuum. What happens, maybe I can find a picture for you, but if you ran buckets for any length of time, you've likely seen a lot of spigots that have big icicles hanging off them, I don't know, three inches long, where it was running when it was cold out. And it was, basically it was uh, right on the verge of, of freezing or running. So that's where buckets kind of have the advantage over 316s. Because what'll happen is let's say, let's go through this here, let's say this tree here wants to run, this tree here wants to run, this tree here wants to run, and this one, and this one. If you're in buckets for any length of time, you'll know that there's, there's days that some trees just run like crazy and others just don't run at all because it's just a touch too cold, but you'll get a little pocket that's warm in your bush. So... Let's say this one, this one, this one, this one, this one want to run. 
That's, I don't know, six. Yeah, let's just make it six. So six trees want to run. And the rest don't. Often a tree will have two taps. So 12 taps, six. So we got 24 taps that want to run and the rest don't want to run. What am I doing? No, that's wrong. That's wrong. Six times two equals 12. Okay, so then you might have 10 different individual runs times 10, so you got 120 taps that want to run. So you'll have these ones, let's say from here down, that don't want to run either because it's cold or they haven't, the sun hasn't come up over the horizon yet enough to thaw this out. So what you now have is 120 taps that are losing minutes. Doesn't sound like much, but it adds up day after day after day. If this takes two extra hours to unthaw, these things have been backed up now for two hours, 120, 120 times two, 240 hours of, of one tap. So you, know, you know what I mean? So it, it makes an impact in that early early season when you're just getting a couple trees that are trying to get going and these typically are your best producing trees another thing that i've noted can happen is let's say you have several um, balsam or spruce trees or cedars or whatever you might have in the area is that the sun can't penetrate for a while freezes it up now let's say all these wanted to run for an extra hour let's say it's only the bottom section you got about 20 to 40 taps on a line so you got 20 to 40 taps per line so you got 400 taps that are just sitting dormant for an extra hour now obviously these are hard numbers and throughout the season it kind of flows back and forth. When the evening is running in the evening and it starts starting to get down to the freezing, your whole line is almost full. All your vacuums are in your, in your drop tubes at each individual tree and at the last section. So when this thing freezes throughout the night, the whole thing freezes inside all the taps or in all, inside all the T's. So it takes a considerable amount of heat to get that moving again. But once it moves, it thaws itself out. Another thing that slows it down in the morning is even something as simple as here, on the corners. Daddy, Sun can't reach the back of those points. And so there it takes longer to unthaw and holds everything up. Whereas if you, Ran buckets for any length of time, you'll know right in the morning is your real hard running time. It, as soon as that sun pops up, hits that heat on that tree, it just starts flowing. So when you're backed up and you have several of these trees that are really wanting to get after it, but it can't because they're held up, it does take its toll throughout the early season, which makes your light to medium syrup, or whatever it's called now, golden and amber, I think it's called. This system I've noted works well in the end, later parts of season when you don't have near those hard freeze ups. When the sap is kind of running throughout the night a little bit, because if you have any sort of flow in these lines, they don't really freeze up. So if you have a minus three Celsius, whatever that is in Fahrenheit, night and you got a couple lines that are just kind of because there's still suction on them because they're still vacuum so they'll run a little bit throughout the night and it'll keep them going and then come spring or come morning they just pop open again and get after it but then you're starting to make that medium to dark syrup so what i've done in my case and it's kind of kind of had its pros and cons is 
instead of just saying this system is flawed, I've just went and added an extra 200 taps to kind of make up for that early season lack that I have. But then I'm kind of flooded in the in the um, later part of the year. So it's kind of just a trade-off. One thing I'm going to try this spring is in the evening, I'm going to try and pull the tap at the very top at night. That way most of the sap can run out through gravity and out. And what that will allow it to hopefully do is not have very much to freeze. Then come morning, I'll go run back up with the snow machine, pop it in. And hopefully that will work alright. Well, hopefully that helps you out guys, gives you a little bit of a, an idea of what uh, you can sort of expect and think about. Just remember, this is my one single opinion, um, just what I've noted over the past few years. Uh, where I'm current, where my bush is currently set up is there's really no option for buckets. There's the only idea I've kind of had was I could put buckets up top on the little plateau, little flat spot up there, and then run a one-inch ABS pipe down so I could go up with a snow machine, gather up my pails, and dump it in a big funnel, run it down the hill. But that doesn't seem like very much fun, so I probably won't do that at all. If anyone else has encountered this problem or has a suggestion, feel free to leave a comment down below if this was a helpful uh, tip for you about whether or not to run 3 sixteenths. I don't think I would really run it in a mixed bush I think there'd be just too much shade to be fighting with. Currently, I just have a few evergreens right at the base of my hill, um, a few hemlocks and stuff that I need to get rid of. So anyways, if you found this video kind of helpful, appreciate if you would consider subscribing and hitting that notification over here. It's a little bell looking thing. That way, every time I post one of these wonderful, informative videos, you'll get a little ding letting you know that I put out some great content for you. Anyways, we'll catch you next.